Hello, hey, this is Kent here at Disciples Prosper. I feel so inclined to address a question I was given in a direct message on Instagram. I had put out uh, some videos that call out members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and, and suggesting that I, I'd like to work with them. And the person in the direct message asked, do you have to be a member of my faith to work with me? And the answer is no, you don't. But the reason why I did that, there's, there's many reasons why, but one is I wanted to, to openly say I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, I, was, I was raised in it, but my parents weren't active. So I, I went on, on uh, from age 10 to 16, I went to church on Sundays, essentially to get out of working up on the farm for three hours a week because my parents weren't active at the time and my dad and stepmom and but they let me go to church. So I got a, I got a building fence and uh, and feeding the horses and working on corrals and hauling manure for a three hour break to go to church. And another reason is because I was an only child and I I didn't have that. Uh, I wanted the social life. I wanted to be engaged with other people my age. And I lived in a small, small community where the nearest house to me was, you know, about a half a mile away or whatever it was. So, uh, so the point I'm trying to say is um, I am an active member of the church. I, um, I turned my life over to the Lord at age 18, end up serving a mission in outer Mongolia. And I had started this, a, a Instagram, for example, in probably July of 2023. And I'd never used Instagram before. And I, my intention was I, w I wanted to, to be available. I wanted to reach out and connect with anyone in whatever walk of faith that they may be. And I found that as I did that, that I, I was hitting some roadblocks in that I couldn't speak openly about what I believed and my understanding. For example, in a lot of my earlier feeds, I say something to the effect, prophet leader, uh, a prophet leader taught la la la. And when I'm referencing the prophet leader, essentially I was saying someone from the Book of Mormon who was a prophet leader or someone who was a president of the, of the church or an apostle in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I was referencing those kinds of people, but to, I, and I feel like I was kind of diluting who I was and what my message is by not just being open about who I am and where I come from. Now, having said that, this podcast essentially is to help disciples, those that have committed their life to the Lord, to follow his teachings, to actually live what he taught, not just to be a hearer of it, not just to be a memorizer of facts of it, but to be someone who lives it, who's a doer, and is striving on a daily basis to live the teachings of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about hyperbole, I'm talking about literally living it, loving one another, being kind to one another, praying for those that despitefully use or persecute you, blessing and serving and praying and loving for, to have that love for your fellow man. Because if you don't have that love, you have nothing. Um, so what I, where I'm coming from from this is, I simply wanted to have the ability to say, I am a member of that church. I believe in that church. I believe it is led by a current prophet, prophet, seer, and revelator. And that that, uh, that person is a, a living Moses. And he communes with God. And he points each of us to do likewise, just like Moses did. For example, in the Old Testament, there were some uh, some young men who approached Moses and said those guys over there they're 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 preaching like they know what they're talking about you should get after them Moses you know they're they're stepping onto your into your territory of as leader and Moses said to them would to God that all men were prophets <laughs> and I tell I testify to you that that is what the purpose of life is is to learn how to receive revelation in your life to be guided by God, to come to know God. And what a true prophet does is someone who communes with God, works with God, has come into his, to his presence from the inside out and 
and teaches other people how to do likewise so that they can have the same joy, so that they can enjoy the presence of the Lord in their lives today, not when they die, not in some future day, but to know him today and to implement and live his teachings today. Because we learn in the New Testament that when you when you do the doctrine, you know of yourself if it's right or not. When you live what Jesus Christ taught, you get the fruits of it. And if you don't get the fruits of it and it's and it's hogwash and it, and it doesn't give you peace, joy, happiness, etc., then you might know that it's not a seed you want to plant. But I tell you from personal experience that it does bring those fruits. It does change your life. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to have challenges. That doesn't mean that everything's going to be hunky-dory. Because I love how it's put in the Book of Mormon. That when when people get to the state where they're where they're living right, they're connected with God, and then and then all of a sudden all of your obstacles are gone. There's no enemies, everything's hunky-dory, everything's falling into place, you're prospering. That is the time when we as human beings forget God. We forget how amazing he is and how he wants to bless us with abundance. He wants to give us joy. He wants to give us the fruits of the spirit. He wants to, uh, we learn in the doctrine to come and pour his knowledge down upon us. But the question is, will we live what we know? Will we live his teachings now? Will we align ourselves with him and give up our selfish nature, our carnal and, and beastly nature. And when we do, when we do come unto him, guess what's going to happen? He's going to show you what your weakness is. Because as you draw closer to him, he draws closer to you. And when that happens, you're going to discover, hey, there's some things I need to work on. There's some things I need to develop, such as humility. And a lot of people... In, that are in, in, in the traditions of man entrenched in the arm of flesh will say, oh, well, this bad thing happened to me when I was trying to do what's right. Therefore, it must not be right. No, 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 no. That, and then they call it a, a stumbling block. But the reality is this is a stepping stone. God has showed you, hey, this is where you are. This is where you need to be. And that should humble you. And when it humbles you, then you have a choice. We learn also in the Book of Mormon that, that men sometimes repent when they're humbled. And when you choose to humble yourself, having had some kind of quote unquote painful personal experience, then that allows the Lord to work miracles in your life. Miracles that transform you, miracles that enable you to find joy, peace, and happiness in any circumstance. So for example, two thoughts came to mind. One is when I turned my life over to the Lord at 18, I was flabbergasted with the results. I ended up going on a mission to outer Mongolia, came home, ran for student government. I got involved in student government and uh, I had, I was fit. I was dating beautiful women. In fact, I was engaged to a beautiful woman and I had a nice car. I thought I had it all. I was felt I was invincible because I knew the doctrine that I was a son of God, like all of humanity is a son or daughter of God or can be when they choose to live his ways. And at the end of the day, I needed to be humbled. And that humility came in the form of me waking up in the state hospital having been court ordered there and not being not being able to remember that and the I, I, i'm t this is how this is how bad it was i was so out of it that they that the the workers in the psych ward where i was before i was court ordered put a mask on my face before i met in front of the judge because they were afraid i would spit on the judge i was out of it and just prior to that, you know, a year or two months before that, I was engaged to a beautiful woman at work, working at BYU and a student at BYU. I, how does this stuff happen? <laughs> and after I was diagnosed with a mental illness, 
and put on the medicine. I put on almost 60 pounds. And for 30 years, or excuse me, for 23 years, I weighed that excess pounds. Um, and there were, I think, two, maybe three occasions when I got off the medicine, lost the weight, and then relapsed, got back on some medicine, gained the weight again. And, and, and my last experience with that was in 2020 when I was hospitalized again, court ordered again after being arrested again because I got off my medicine again. And all the times that I got off, I got off under doctor supervision, by the way, because I had been doing so well on the medicine for over 10 years. So we're like, hey, you're not having any symptoms. Everything's wonderful. Let's try it without the medicine or reduction of it, et cetera. So I, uh, that happened again. And, and I was like, okay, I got to take the medicine. So I, when I came back from the hospital, as I've mentioned before, my a day after I came home from the hospital, our sixth child was born. And I began the journey again, back to putting on weight. And um, fast forward from September of 2020 to, um, to July of 2021, I ballooned up to 288 pounds, and, which was the heaviest I'd ever been because I got, and this was the third, third major time that I'd lost weight and got hospitalized again. And so all in all, for 23 years, essentially, I was six, over about 260 pounds or heavier. So um, in that J July, I have a picture of it on social. Um, in that moment when I was at that heaviest, I was in pretty low state. I, but I had made that decision that, man, I must need to take this medicine in order to maintain my sanity. So I, that was planted in my heart. And But when I got to that he heavy level, I decided, you know what? I need to change the way I'm eating, change what I'm doing, take more accountability. So I did, and over 18 months, I trimmed down to about 254 pounds. But then I got stuck at 254, and then I started, um, I started a podcast in March of 2023 um, called "Jesus Is the Mark," essentially making him the focal point, the aim of your life. In May of 2023, I discovered this amazing miracle. That turning your life over to the Lord is not just a heart thing. It's not just a thought thing or a mind thing. He wants it all. He wants to transform everything about your life, including your physique. So I gave him my physique through personal experience. I, I just recognized that, wow, I need to, I need to take it to the next level. I did that. And within five weeks, I was down over 20 pounds and uh, I started my own business. And recently I have changed gears with that business and changed the name of that business uh, from wise men prosper to disciples prosper because I don't want to serve just men and I don't want to serve just members of my faith. I want to serve people who are striving to follow Jesus Christ that are taking his teachings literally and striving to put their lives in order and align it with God so that they can draw near to God and he can draw near to them. And to help them learn what it's taken me 30 years to learn in a fraction of the time. And to do that, I'm giving my content away. I give it away on a podcast, disciplesprosper.com, uh, which is also put on to YouTube. Uh, I have social media that, uh, points to those venues and I also have a free community that I'm giving away and at school.com slash uh, disciples prosper and why do I do this I do this because his his the teachings of Jesus Christ ought to be free <laughs> and it ought to cost nothing it's it's like milk and honey and I I, I just want to give back because I have been given so much. And yes, I have had real painful personal experiences. Yes, my life has been raw at times. But you know what? I needed those things. I needed a piece of humble pie. 
I needed to draw nearer to my Lord. I needed to learn how to implement his teachings in my life, not superficially, but from internally. I needed to learn to know my maker. And because of those trials and tribulations, I learned to remember him. I learned to put him first. I learned how to have an eye single to his glory and to find myself as I gave myself in the service of others. And, you know, as a 10 year old boy, people ask, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? I'm like, I don't know. And you, you ask other 10 year old boys, what do you want to do when they ask you? And they say, I, I want to be a lawyer, doctor, businessman or whatever. Well, that's great. Well, what does your dad do? And nine times out of 10, they said what they said that their dad did. But I didn't want to be a truck driver like my dad. I didn't know what I wanted to be. So at the ripe age of 18, I discovered that I was a son of God uh, and the ramifications of that, you know, and it came to me in a very personal experience where I learned that just like a kitten becomes a cat, just like a puppy becomes a dog, just like a colt becomes a horse, that likewise, as sons and daughters of God, we can become like them, which, which blew my mind because that meant, wow, that means I could become anything I would like in this life. I could become a doctor. I could become a lawyer. I could become a businessman. I could become anything. But at that time in my life, which was uh, when I was 10 years old, what, 40 years ago, there was no such thing as social media. There's no such thing as podcasts. There's no such thing as as being a guru, if you will. Like <laughs> those things didn't exist. And But I needed 40 years of life's experiences to prepare me to, to share a message of hope, to share that, yes, bad things happen to good people and there's a reason for it. And it is to remind us of who to turn to because if not we re- we we turn to ourselves like i'm the one who trimmed down i'm the one who went to the gym six days a week i'm the one who decided not to eat a bunch of junk food i and it all becomes i i i i selfish 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 but the reality is i tried that for 23 years to trim down and, and i just come back to my inceptor's not working because of the medicine i make and what the doctors told me and the side effects well Ladies and gentlemen, I still take the medicine and I'm still, and I'm transforming and becoming fit again. So the moral of the story is when you turn your life over to the Lord, he gives you purpose. He gives you power, sustaining power, enabling power to take control of your life, to learn self mastery, mastery over the self. In other words, to gain control over the natural man, the carnal, sensual man or woman for that matter. And the way to do that is to turn your life over to him. And that means surrender. You've got to surrender to him. And it's contrary to what the world teaches. The world says something in the effect. I remember when I was a kid, there was a popular program called where there's a will, there's an A. So in other words, use your willpower and you can bring these things about. Yes, there's truth to that. You know, for example, when I was 18, uh, a man that was a mentor to to me, he he said, essentially, uh, he sold me on a dream of becoming a a franchise owner and how you could become a multimillionaire. Well, fast forward 30 years, um, he became that. He owns like four or five franchises and he's he's loaded. Um, President of the Porsche Club and he's, he's doing great. So there are there if you follow the laws you can you can find success in the world you can if you live the the things that you're supposed to do and produce greater value than what you're giving in exchange you can make an impact in the world such as Steve Jobs did made influenced millions and millions of people and has a you know a, a company worth trillions of dollars and he did that by living successful laws and that's, that is wonderful. I am not talking down about that in any way, shape, or form. And I invite anyone and everyone to study books like Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich and to learn how to, what these laws of success are. But on top of that, this is the thing about disciples prospering. It's not just about the dollars. It's not just about 
um, influence and impact. Those are wonderful things. Uh, uh, let me let me give an example to extract this idea, and we'll, we'll close with this for today's podcast. So, when I was a boy, age ten to sixteen, I lived on a horse ranch, and my feel, I my um, my stepmom, she was she had great intentions. She was striving to help teach me how to work, and I vowed to her when I was a kid, I'll never thank her for teaching me how to work. Well. I, I'm publicly thanking her now. And it took years for me to do that. In fact, a few years before she passed, I sent her a big thank you letter and thanked her for all the good she did in my life. I didn't see that when I was young, though. I just saw the things that I didn't like, the things that that uh, that were forceful. And I rebelled against that. And part of it was because I, I, I can see this in retrospect, is that Everything was about building her horse ranch. And that's wonderful. Just like the guy that became a franchise owner. That's wonderful. You can make a big impact with a lot of people um, becoming wealthy. And I, I'm, I'm not talking down about that in any way, shape, or form. But when, I, when I'm talking about disciples prospering, though, I'm talking about living divine laws that will bring forth that prosperity of this, you know, the prosperity of the world, this abundance. Um, and for, for those that, th that say, well, you know, you can't be wealthy and spiritual, uh, that's not right. Because I love how it's put in, in the Pearl of Great Price. It says that Zion is a place where people are of one heart and one mind with no poor among them. Now, how can you have no poor among you if everyone's poor? You can't. You got to, you've got to have an eye single to God. And when you do that, he allows you if you want it to acquire wealth and why do you do that why do you seek for wealth we learn in, in the book of mormon in jacob why why seek it well first you found him and second you want others to have what you have you want to be free with your substance which is charity not charity of giving people just time and money but also giving ideas what got you the money ideas uh, living correct principles and when you when you're free with your substance like faith is faith is the substance of things not seen well, when you're free with that substance and you give these ideas these truths it enables other people to live them and know for themselves if it be right or not so in conclusion what what i was getting at with the story of of my childhood is that I think one of the reasons I had butted it is about her kingdom. And I didn't, I wasn't born here to build someone else's kingdom. I was born here just like you and I to build something greater than myself. And that is to have an eye single to the glory of God and to build his kingdom come. And the only way that that happens is living correct principles, living the teachings of Christ and other sages of the world. If, let me give a classic example of this. So part of the honors program that I, that I did in, at Brigham Young University included um, reading a book from Eastern and Western um, sides of the world. The book I chose to read was the autobiography of Gandhi. And it was phenomenal, highly recommended. In the introduction, he said something that was very powerful. He said, I've been striving and pining for 30 years to achieve moksha, which is to see God face to face. And the translation of moksha in, in the footnote says the, the best equivalent of moksha in English is salvation. Well, woo, what do you know? Salvation is to know God one-on-one, -on -one, to commune with him, to be in his presence, to know that he is as much as you know that you are. And he strove for 30 years for this experience by living correct principles. And one of the books that he held dear to him, dear to his heart, and he studied it on a regular basis was the Bhagavad Gita. Powerful, powerful book. I, I've read it, I study it. It's, it's an amazing book. And Likewise, there are other amazing books and other amazing people that are members of my church or not. Not my church, members of the Church of Jesus Christ or not. But do we take the time to learn from one another? 
I, I love the scripture that says, cease to find fault. When you find fault, you're, if you're seeking it, you're going to find it. But if you're seeking for the good in other people, you're going to find it and you can extract from it and you can live it and grow and you can learn from one another and be edified together. So if you are striving to live correct principles, striving to live the teachings of Jesus Christ, striving to do what is right, this is my audience. I, I want to work with real people with real problems and I'm not the, I'm not the, the guru the, to help solve your problems, but I know the source and I know who can solve those problems for you. Just like he did for me. And that's through the Lord, my savior, my redeemer, even Jesus Christ. And I testify to you that when you come unto him, he will transform you. And there will be painful personal experiences involved in that. For me, it was being facing my greatest fear, akin to Job, where he said he had to face his greatest fear. And he did. Um, and he lost everything. And I lost everything, too. I, I thought I had it all, but I lost it. And now it's coming back because I persisted in doing what was right. I persisted in turning over things to him. And line upon line, he, 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 he helped me grow into a man. I'll be 50 this year. And I'm, I marvel at his tender mercies and his individual plan for me. And I know likewise, he has an individual plan for you. If you'll turn to him, he will give you power to turn your weakness to a strength. And I know that to be true. I've lived it. I've experienced it. I've witnessed it. And I invite you to turn to him, regardless of your faith, turn to him and follow him and learn from other people. And the final note is in the Book of Mormon, I love this verse. It says something in effect, what I, the Lord, have spoken to you, make a record of what I, the Lord, have spoken to you, whether you be in the north, the south, the east, the west, or the isles of the sea, you should be, we're commanded to make a record of what he has spoken unto you. And Yes, God speaks to people. And regardless of your faith, he's the respecter of no person. And when he speaks to you, make a record of it and live it. Live it and see the fruits of it. And as you grow line upon line and draw nearer to him, he will draw nearer to you and you will grow in the spirit of revelation. It will be able to guide and direct you in what to do for a career, what to do for a family, who to marry, um, what what to do when you're in a tight spot it, it's it may not give you step by step by step by step but it gives you a vision of where to go and then as you act on it it gives you the power the atonement that is gives you the power to transform the power to bring those things about and it happens faster than you can imagine and he can change your life faster than you can imagine and become more abundant than you imagine so turn to him. And if you'd like to connect, um, you know how to reach me. Um, and just learn to live what <laughs> live right. Uh, and finally, just one more note. I'm, I am sharing this message. You know, I've had several people reach out and talk about how my faith is yada, yada, yada. They say the, ne the negative comments. I'm like, I, I'm speaking from my heart here. I'm not, I'm not trying to convert anyone. I'm not trying to tell people who's right and who's wrong. I'm simply saying from my, from the, my reality, my life that I have lived as I've come to know the Lord through the church of Jesus Christ, the Latter-day Saints teachings and ordinances, etc., that it has brought joy to my life and it has brought joy to my life to see others embrace light and truth. And that light and truth can be found anywhere and everywhere. And you ought to be gleaning light and truth from anywhere and everywhere. That uh, doesn't mean you you will necessarily want to go to a dark place and have to hunt. You know, say you had a bucket. A, a friend of mine gave me this analogy. He said, if you have a, 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 a what is it? Was a, a 50 pound bucket of of grain and there's one little nugget of truth in there. You don't you don't necessarily want to spend your time diving, diving for one little nugget. 
through a plethora of, of things. The idea is to find a bucket that's got lots of nuggets in it, big nuggets in it. I remember reading a book once and it was like 400 pages long. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I got that. I got it. I got it. I got it. And I was like, it's a great book. It's a powerful book. Right? But it was stuff that I had already studied, stuff that I already knew. But then I came across one nugget in 400 pages that changed my life. So the, the point that I'm trying to make is, yes, you can find truth anywhere and everywhere, and you ought to. Um, but there are some sources that have more truth than others. And um, when you find a sleeve of gold, run with it. But that doesn't mean you don't want gold anywhere else. And I got to, I got, I know I have to give the cliffhanger of that book that with the one golden nugget. I got to tell you what it is. So the golden nugget is that through obedience, through living line upon line, through living and aligning with Christ's teachings, you have access to power, real power. I'm not talking about fame fortune, money, things that can be bought with monies. I'm talking about power, the powers of heaven. You have access to those, direct access. And that, that is the power to transform your life, power to transform your family's life, power to transform the world. I, I love how one teacher put it. He said, uh, one book um, is by uh, Sterling W. Seal in his book called Leadership, Volume 1. He said, if the world practiced the law of the boomerang, the golden rule, the teachings of Christ to do unto others as if you do them do unto you, the world would change in 30 days. Well, that change starts with you. You are the only person that can change you. So change you. And I promise you, if you change you, the rest of the world will change. So thanks for joining me for today. Have a wonderful one. Talk to you later.